Hello viewers, welcome to Ekam IAS Academy. So today you know what is happening all over India that is everyone's IAS or at Ram Mandir in Ayodhya. So what is so special about this is today after a long journey of almost 500 years of dispute okay so that came to an end with construction of Ram Mandir at Ayodhya. So what is this whether it is man, uh, Mandir to Masid or Masid to Mandir all this controversy we are not going to look into the things because already this was a settled issue but just we will look into the background of this issue so okay what is the timeline that happened what led to the dispute actually so how this dispute came to an end with Supreme Court intervention all these things we look at but for your examination perspective what is most important those things is we will be focusing at the end so so stay tuned okay so what is the temple style of architecture what is so special about this temple how they have planned this construction to withstand for thousand years okay so at least so if you have seen the geographical location of this Ayodhya so this is on the river banks of one particular river which river is it okay then if you know normally this is in the middle gangetic plain so here the soil will be alluvial and silt deposited soil so like construction of a huge temple like this okay so will it withstand how did they make it okay so these important things what type of things they have used and what is the reasons why they have gone for technological innovation so all these things we are going to discuss at then so stay tuned so here you can see what is the issue about Ayodhya Ram Mandir issue so we are going to discuss this because why it is in use it is getting inaugurated today from dispute to construction of Ram Mandir okay a brief timeline we'll be looking into what is the legal journey and what is the Supreme Court verdict related to it and most importantly from your examination perspective article 142 of Indian Constitution so you have seen this article so much in use because in the recent past Supreme Court has been using this article many number of times so what is this is also very important for both prelims and mains okay then architecture of Ram Mandir so these type of things are important in terms of culture okay and what is the significance and what is the conclusion for this so these are the things so this forms part of society as well as art and culture in GS1 and GS2 some provisions of constitution are also used in these things okay so what is why it is in use mainly because today Ayodhya Ram Mandir was getting inaugurated by the Prime Minister okay so if you have seen this is a timeline of this dispute okay so if you have remembered this dispute almost has a history of almost 500 years okay so whether it is Mandir to Masjid, Masjid to Mandir all this okay so we are not going to question those things but here what we have to remember is so right from the arrival of Mughals okay so this dispute has started okay so you know in which year Mughals came into India they came to India in 15 26 if you have remembered before this we have Delhi Sultanate okay and you know Lodi dynasty especially Ibrahim Lodi will be replaced okay so he will be fighting a battle of Panipat 1 if you have remembered okay so that was uh, the battle between Ibrahim Lodi and Mughal ruler and founder Babur okay so in that Babur has been victorious and he established Mughal kingdom replacing Delhi Sultanate okay so you know Babur has a commander called Mir Baki so he okay so in um, respect of Babur he constructed it uh, like a masjid in place of a temple according to some allegations by made by locals at that point of time that happened in 1528 okay so locals said that there were there was a temple on which this masjid was built okay so that is why as it was made or it was constructed uh, to give some respect to Babur it was named as Babri Babri Masjid okay so then what happened you know during the Britishers were there okay so at that time there are so much religious confrontations happened between two communities that this land belongs to us and all so then what happened British said okay so they don't want because at that time they are in a hurry to consolidate power over India okay they don't want India to be uh, like they don't want India to lose as a British colony so then what happened so they said okay inner part of the temple area so you take this means they have given inner part to the Muslims and outer part to the Hindus in that way they have tried to negotiate and settle this issue okay then after independence you got independence right we got independence in 1947 then in 1949 what happened so 
this uh, Lord Rama's idol was placed inside the masjid. Okay, so some people has placed this Lord Rama's statue inside the masjid. Then what happened? So at that time, the Union government, okay, headed by Jawaharlal Nehru, so he ordered. So whenever this happened, so the people said that it is a masjid and illegal. This is an illegal act to place like uh, different religious idol in the particular place of worship. So then what happened? As the communal tensions are going to rise, so then. Then the then Prime Minister ordered that this temple entire premises has to be closed. Means they have locked up. So no one has to use it. Either Muslims nor I or the Hindus. No one can use this temple. Then what happened in 1950? So whenever anyone is denied their right to worship. Okay. So what you will do? Because right to worship is also one of the fundamental rights. Right? So many petitions were filed before the courts, various courts. Okay. In civil courts of Fazabad and all, there were so many petitions. Okay. Whom like Hindus for their right to worship and Muslims to white uh, right for their right to worship and also there is third sect that is Nirmoki Akaras who are these people this is the term which you are coming so much in news okay so these people are also a Hindu religious denomination only but they are generally if you have remembered there is a Bhakti saint called Ramananda okay this person has established okay so a religious denomination where they will try to protect and they will take care of some hindu temples okay so they are also saying from most many years okay so we are authorized to take care about this ram temple so we want the right over this particular place in this way it is a dispute that it got tri parties to this dispute who are these hindus Muslims as well as this particular sect that is Niromi Akara. Okay, so then what happened in 1961? Sunni Waqf Board also said no. We want right over this particular and we want this idol to be removed. Okay, so then district judge have asked for opening the temple premises. Okay, so or the masjid premises to Hindu worshippers. Then what happened? You know, in 1992. Okay, so uh, some like related to some particular political organization and uh, other things religiously, they have started uh, um, like planned a particular Radhyatra type of thing from Gujarat to UP Ayodhya and they have demolished this Babri Masjid okay by Karsevaks okay so belonging and then what happened Hindu Muslim violence and almost 2000 people died in this particular thing then what happened okay so then you can see later as judges uh, Supreme Court judge also have accused these persons LK Adwan and Kalyan Singh also political issue then what happened so a train carrying Hindu activists, okay, Godra riots happened in 2002. So because of this event, then what happened in 2010, okay, almost Allahabad High Court said two third of Ayodhya site belongs to Hindu and one third belongs to Waqf. Then what happened? So this Allahabad High Court verdict, okay. So this is interesting because this verdict have given this land of disputed land to three parties who are claiming in equal parts, okay. So then what happened? Supreme Court has stated this verdict okay on the Ayodhya dispute and it has taken this okay so if you have seen here some people okay so they are not happy with this Allahabad High Court verdict and they have approached the Supreme Court okay then Supreme Court has stated this verdict okay so do you think the so Supreme Court has any power to like uh, withdraw a case before any high court or lower court and can stay the order under which particular provision it can do answer in the comment section then what happened so Supreme Court said it will take up and it will look into this issue okay so then in 2017 it has started uh, looking into this issue almost for 40 days okay so there were different uh, proceedings happened on this particular issue in supreme court and this is the longest case that happened in the history of supreme court okay almost for 40 days so many judges have heard both a side and three sides arguments and they have came and they have delivered a verdict in 2019 okay if you have seen so what did they say supreme court disputed uh, has granted this disputed land to Ram Lalla only okay means they belong to the Ram temple and also because they did not give it without any evidence they have taken archaeological survey of India's whatever their uh, findings they have found because uh, under the masjid okay so they have found some pillars of the temples remains of Hindu temple and all so based on those evidences only Supreme Court said yes this area belongs to this Ram Mandir only and they said okay so 
on the other side also they should not lose okay because they have some con whatever they said is valid so they what did they say they have asked the up government or the central government to give some proportionate land also okay so you have to give some land for them to build a masjid in that way this came to a peace okay so this issue 2019 it got settled and in 2020 foundation was formed foundation was laid after forming a 15 member trust to oversee this construction and you know in 2024 on 22nd january this mandir was you know getting inaugurated now okay so if you see from dispute to construction of ram mandir this is what we have seen in this particular explanation okay in the form of an image okay i have explained mobiles constructing a babri masjid vishwa hindu parishad okay in 1990s okay so they have launched karsevak's uh, demolition of babri masjid then court's ruling in 2019 even alhabad high court's verdict of equally dividing among three parties was suspended by supreme court and then after archaeological survey conducting some excavations and findings based on that supreme court has delivered its verdict a five judge bench okay so that has given a verdict in 2019 so then what happened handling the construction the rom uh, they was given th this particular job of handling the construction of ram mandir was given to ram janmabhoomi theerth kshetra okay this is the nodal trust which is authorized so then what is the legal journey we have seen okay so already the dispute is between this babri masjid and whether it is the place of birth of rama or whether it is the location of babri masjid so this is alhabad high court verdict that has been given as i told you equally into three parts almost 2.77 acres of land then to three parties who are they sunni board representing muslims the romi akhada these people who are take caring of about uh, um the temples of especially the ram temple also they are claiming that we have the custodian of taking care of this temple in ram lalla means the people who wants to believe who are believing that that is a place of birth of lord rama so then what happened this is a supreme court verdict it suspended the ruling of alhabad high court because it has given into three parts okay and it said disputed land should be given to hindu petitioners for building a temple there and muslims will get another place okay they will get at another appropriate appropriate place a land to construct this mosque okay so this is based on the archaeological survey of india's evidence okay so you just answer in the comment section who was the first director general of archaeological survey of india okay so and the non of uh, this non islamic building beneath okay there were some hindu temple remains okay that is what and union government set up a trust to manage the affairs of this so the trust is not so important 2020 it was established and it is located in this particular site only so how many members 15 trustees will be there okay so what happens is one interesting thing you have to know is nine permanent and six nominated persons will be there 12 will be nominated by central government okay okay they will be appointed by central government and district collector of ayodhya because the persons will be changing right they will just represent this but they will not enjoy any voting rights out of 15 members only 11 trustees will have voting rights okay do remember this so now what is most important from your examination perspective is in the judgment of ayodhya verdict what is the place for this article 142 why this article was used okay so if you have remembered article 142 of indian constitution itself says okay supreme court is, is having extraordinary powers okay whenever it thinks that to do some justice okay or to do complete justice okay so it can have some extraordinary powers to issue some orders or decrees okay in case if it feels that there is a need then to do complete justice supreme court can issue some orders or decrees that is what the purpose of article 142 so whenever this entire temple site which was contentious thing between three parties and it was given to hindus so then it the court said till then there was a masjid and it was demolished right so even muslims also should not have this feeling in mind okay so for them okay so we are going to use this article 142 and we are going to use these powers to allocate some site for construction of masjid for them also because they wanted to do complete justice to all the parties of the dispute so this is the first time a civil dispute involving private parties okay so has been uh, delivered a verdict through this 142 article 142 of indian constitution then what is this concept of adverse possession okay possession means when you are holding ownership rights and all these things okay of one particular property so what happened here what is adverse possession that was claimed by muslims and was rejected by supreme court is see for example 
here whatever the muslims okay they are contending is from okay from almost 1528 there is babri masjid okay so from then till it was demolished in 1992 it was under the control of muslims right so as we are holding it continuously okay so we should have the possession of the land overall over the ram mandir land also that is what the claim made by the muslim or the sunni waqf board of this particular up state so then whether this what is the question here whether the sunni waqf board have acquired the title of disputed land by adverse possession because they are enjoying okay adverse possession means hostile possession of a property in which they are having continuous uninterrupted and peaceful possession for many years okay so as they are holding continuous uninterrupted possession for many years so why can't we be given this particular land that is what the concept okay so they have said that this has been built almost 400 years ago and by virtue of long exclusive and continuous possession because 1528 till 1992 they have enjoyed so they have enjoyed the possession over this particular land okay so this is what they have observed this argument has been rejected by the supreme court okay so they do not believe in this because they have taken archaeological survey of india's remains as the evidence okay then what happened architecture so in this the dimensions are 235 feet okay what are the dimensions this can be asked in state pieces or other exams okay so almost 72 meters wide and this is going to be third largest hindu temple okay after complete construction and if you see who is the main architect is very important this chandrakant by sompura this person name can be asked in various exams okay so this person has a, this person's family also has a a history of almost 15 generations onwards they're constructing so many important temples in india okay and some important temples like somnath even Akshardham in Gujarat also. So that temple also was constructed by these persons, family uh, persons only. So this person was chosen as a chief architect. Okay. Then what is the architecture style? This is most important. Okay. So Nagara style of architecture. You know, in art and culture, how many styles of temple architecture we have? We have three types. Okay. So one is Nagara. We have Dravida. And we have Vesara. Okay, these three styles of architecture are very important. Then we'll be discussing this. Okay, so here, just before that, I just want to explain some things. Okay, basic things which are important from examination perspective. So you know, normally Nagara temple style of architecture is seen in North India. Okay, so North India temples will be there mostly in Nagara temple style. What is Dravida style? It is prominent in Southern India. We'll see Vesara in a while. Just wait for this. Okay. Then in Nagara temple style, how the temple dome will be there? It, in, it will be in curvical form. Okay. So most of the times like this, it will be there. But in Southern Indian temples, it will be like a step made. Okay. Pillar based uh, platforms will be at the top of the temple. This is a difference in the temple style of architecture. Then what happens? If you see in Nagara temple style, there won't, be, there won't be directly the temple entrance. Okay. So it will be on a raised platform with steps leading to it okay normally but here what happens it will be within a boundary wall so if you have seen most of the southern indian temples okay they will be located within boundary wall so this concept of boundary wall is not so prominent in nagara style of architecture okay so you will have this okay so and sometimes four entrances also will be there for the temples in Dravida and one more thing is presence of a tank is not there in Nagara you know you call it Koneru okay all these things no Kolanu Koneru all these things so a tank also will be a prominent feature of Dravida that will be used for ritual bathing of the main idols or during any auspicious things also this water will be used for the puja and all the related things of the deity then if you see the entrance to this temple okay and idol if you see they will be placed with ganga and yamuna as the dwarapalas but here what happens in in the southern indian temples you have not you don't have okay but you have the related gods uh, dwarapalas will be there okay so those will be different dwarapala concept is here but you don't find most of the times in nagara temple style will have ganga yamuna uh, like Mitunas, these images will be there at the entrances. Okay, so this is a basic difference we have, and you know, most of the times, whenever you're reading such things, you have to know 
in every particular part okay like you know mandapas are common features of dravida style okay so you have to know garbhagruha okay so what is this sanctum sanctorium what is this amlaka what is this uh, and you know in nagara we call this tower okay under which the presiding deity is there shikara we call here it is called viman okay so gopuram or viman we call so this is again divided into three types okay we call it um, lake uh, reka prasad we call latina or we call sometimes okay so like this uh, we have three different types of sikaras in northern indian style temples when you are reading try to understand the differences between these observing in the images in what is the most prominent nagara style of temple architecture we have that is kajuraho temples okay this is considered as most a uh, prominent feature of nagara style of uh, temple architecture and this is constructed by chandela kings almost okay in madhya pradesh 12th century okay they belong to 12th century ad and it was listed as unesco world heritage site also okay so lakshman temple in kajraho those are all very famous konark sun temple also in odisha then what is so famous in dravida style is brihadeshwara temple you know in tanjavur brihadeshwara temple so these are most famous in dravida style of architecture okay so what is vesara style vesara style is nothing but they have incorporated both features of nagara and dravida means north indian and southern indian temples okay so both features are incorporated here those are called vesara style where do you find these temples we find these temples in which particular location especially western chalukyas or kalyani chalukyas of karnataka okay so they have uh, like we have seen the temples like what type of temples i hold patradakkal okay so these temples we have such architectural style okay these are the main things which you have to know and now what is the current thing we have this ram mandir constructed in nagara style especially in gurjara chalukya style this is one of the sub style okay like you in north indian styles we have gurjara style in western indian style and we have odisha style okay jagannath temples there we call and we have north indian temples in different style these are sub styles within nagara style of architecture okay so this is what we have discussed and you know this is most famous from 5th century ad when did this start almost a construction of temple using bricks and stones that started from gupta era only till then we have rock cut type of temples right okay so this is one notable th thing from gupta era only temple construction started almost and what is this panchayatana style means see this will be the main temple okay and four surrounding temples will be there okay surrounding deities will be there so this is panchayatana means five temples four accompanying the major temple this is what the panchayatana style and this was saying borrowed, borrowed from kajuraho group of temples who is this main deity you know ramlala virajman means here whatever the idol that was installed that go, that was going to be installed okay today that was almost uh, an idol of rama in his uh, like infant stage only almost a, like a seven year or 11 year old rama only was going to be installed okay in fine form of lord rama so you can see accompanying deity who will be the shiva temple dashavataras will be there chausat yogini you know this temple has inspired our current indian parliament building also okay so this is a very important ancient temple and 12 incarnations of goddess saraswati so these are the main things okay so fusion of modern and traditional techniques okay so what is so important about this means if you have seen there are 360 pillars and entirely made of stone okay so what is so special about this temple is if you have seen this temple is located on the banks of river sarayu okay this is an ancient name of present day gagga river this is a tributary of river ganga okay so this will originate in nepal himalayas and it will be coming down to this up and bihar so then what happened if you see the location any on in whenever the river flows there will be alluvial and silt type of thing which is very instable okay so unstable means so it will not withstand tall buildings and all then how they construct in this because they have went to almost 15 meters deep and they have totally removed the silt and so, uh, sand whatever that is there and they have 
placed engineer sand there okay means to withstand this temple for so many years thousands of years they don't want this temple to be vulnerable to natural hazards so they made it very in a engineered way marvelous engineering techniques were used okay so and what is another reason is if you have seen this is very near to himalayas the location okay and you know himalayas and this is in earthquake zone 4 okay seismic zone 4 because you know this is after zone 5 zone 4 is most vulnerable to earthquakes okay because it is proximal to himalayas so it should withstand earthquakes also for these reasons they have used okay so the engineered techniques whatever those are used and technological things which are taken from different iits and iits all these things were there and incorporated so that there will not be any disturbance for the temple even though if earthquake zone 5 earthquakes which happen with a high magnitude occur also there won't be any much damage to the temple okay another thing importantly interestingly is the entire temple was made using sandstone only okay and they did not use another interesting feature is they did not use any cement or lime in construction of this particular temple okay so even to resist flooding also the arrangements were made and if you have remembered this temple okay it was being constructed by Larson and Tarbo LNT only and it was helped by Tata Consulting Engineers Limited in constructing this particular temple okay so no iron was used because why iron was not used in this temple iron will have a life of almost 80 to 90 years only but this temple was made to withstand almost 1000 years without any disturbances okay so for these reasons iron was not used at all in the temple okay so then what is the significance now religious significance because long-standing religious dispute has come to an end almost 500 year old dispute was settled culturally it is important because it is related to the birthplace of rama and it is associated with most of the things in ramayana so it is a culturally important for one particular sect of indians and an economic value if you see it creates jobs okay so tourism will be promoted and local area development also will happen development of basic infrastructure like roads even you know some days ago only a few days ago prime minister inaugurated ayodhya airport also connectivity is also getting advanced and also religious peace was brought with the settlement of the dispute okay so now it's time for the practice question so what is the practice question who sculpted the idols of ram lalla of Ram Mandir okay so answer among these who is the person who sculpted so I have given who have been the chief architect of this temple okay so try to understand the question and answer in the comment section then what is the main question for practice jurisdiction of supreme court under article 142 supersedes the executive and legislature discuss okay so sometimes if you have remembered this article 142 is considered as judicial overreach also okay and supreme court is widely using this powers to restore or to normalize you know, to do justice and all so in what situations article 142 was invoked in the recent times also if you know answer in the comment section okay so with this we have come to end of the video in this what did we discuss we have discussed a brief background what happened actually so why is this dispute uh, have been for so long so how it came to an end and we also have seen what is the style of temple architecture of this ram mandir what you have to learn from your examination perspective so what is the three styles of uh, three styles of temple architecture differences between nagara dravida and vesara style we have seen and some other interesting things also why this is so uh, technologically advanced temple what type of materials they have used all these things we have discussed okay so stay tuned for further updates thank you